<laughs> okay, it's a little after seven. The town of Chester Planning Board is now in session. Welcome everybody back. It's a strange sight. We've been on Zooming for a long time on the internet. Uh, we're also broadcasting on, I guess, Facebook and YouTube and WebEx tonight also in that. So uh, hopefully we're going to have permanent cameras. Matt, where's yeah. or Adriana? And we're going to have permanent it's cameras soon. And that, so instead of having the big cameras sticking around here and that, so. All right. So we're not going to be adopting any minutes tonight. Melissa struggled a little bit with them. Her computer was broken for a long time and uh, Word wasn't working, a whole bunch of things. So hopefully at the next meeting. So we're behind on the minutes, but we'll get them adopted shortly on that. So uh, a couple quick updates. Broccoli Patch was, if anyone's here for tonight, was pulled off the agenda. They asked to come off the agenda tonight. Uh, I've been, I have interest now, uh, they've been in contact with me. The cell tower at Walton Lake Estates is now going to be coming in front of us soon. They told me we're going to see something in a couple of weeks. Well, well it's always, always a couple of weeks, but uh, they they think they're going to be on our May meeting. So uh, that's the one at Walton Lake Estates. Um, Great Court Road Solar Farm, Karen called me the other day and said they now have an agreement on the landscape plan. Uh, so they're going to be coming in. I'm assuming they're going to come in on the May meeting also, uh, and we'll get to see that in advance. So uh, Karen was happy with what they came up with in that. So, And there's nothing new on Oakwoods. We're still waiting on the applicant to answer the public comments. So I don't know when they're coming back. Uh, I heard something about Joe Fow was going to answer it, not uh, um, the other guy. And uh, so I don't know when that's going to happen. So sooner or later, I guess they'll come back in. So. All right, first thing on our agenda tonight is an architectural review for Richard Logan. That is Richard, you want to come on up? Just give me one second here, Richard. So Richard would like to replace a four by four with an four by eight with an eight by uh, eight by eight. A lot going on tonight, so we got to move quickly here, Richard. Well, so I'm sure you're ready to go here. So uh, here, let me show. Let's see. This is Richard's current one. That's the one that's sitting there now, right? This is what he's proposing. Very similar. It's a great woodwork, actually, better than all nature. Right, and if anybody knows Gray's woodwork, it's a very high quality, high end product that they have right and he also wants to put a gooseneck light on the front here i can't get exactly this model that's really similar to mine. it's no longer available but it's that that style of gooseneck light and it'll be a full cutoff picture okay so i guess just one quick question i have is this meet the town's lighting ordinance yeah. that was passed it does shining down lights yeah, down it's a full cutoff picture all even, right even that is if you look at the filaments they're below the hub of the the light of the light you can see the filaments in the lamp it's just an LED antique type lamp they're actually within the light so the light can't go above the horizontal okay and this one will actually be it'll be the same thing but they'll have like side down it's just this is just no longer manufacturing okay there we go. i'm good with it that guy it looks nice jack i'm good with it mark john good. yep justin so wait, someone want to make a motion to approve Richard's application for an architectural motion by Mark, second by Justin. All in favor? Aye. Uh, right. You'll have a letter at the building inspector in a day or so. All right. All right. Thank you, Mark. Thanks, Richard. See how simple it is sometimes? Sometimes. Uh, <laughs> All right. Next thing on our agenda tonight is uh, for uh, Laura. Where's Laura? Hang on just a second. <laughs> so Laura, I guess is that a daycare business or what? It's what do you run? It's right an occupational therapy and preschool. Preschool, okay. So, um, so let me. I think we're going to go right to the pictures here. It's better. So, uh, hold on. Just let me. Application current entrance. So this is the current entrance right here. Mm -hmm. And I guess, why don't you just explain what you want to do? We're building a vestibule so that there's uh, an entrance way and it won't extend beyond the, the roof line 
uh, it's going to be five foot by eight foot with a window in it and a door. So just so you're going to my vestibule. We're going to use the existing structure and build right off of it. So you're going to enclose this here, and yes. then the doors will be over here or something like that. Sure. The window on this side over here. Yes, correct. And color is going to be the same as the building. Same exact color. Okay. This time it's Justin's turn. Love it, John. Mark, I had no issues. Jackie, Don, yeah, fine. Barry, okay. Any special lighting? Anything you're putting in there, or no, there's an existing light. Okay. All right. Someone no, makes motion to approve the architectural. No, uh, the exterior lights are already on the front of the building. Which is over here, or mm -hmm. yeah. the corners and that. I think I see. Yeah. All right. Someone will make a motion to grant architectural. I'll make that motion. Motion, <laughs> motion by Justin. Oh, second okay. by John. We'll get you another one. Uh, uh, second by uh, John. All in favor? Uh, aye. 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 You'll have a letter to the building inspector. You're all, all set. Thank you very much. Okay. okay. Next thing on agenda tonight is Melanie Brown. No, that's Melanie, that's you're here? Yeah. Melanie wants to do a sign, right? It's a sign here. So right. give me one second here. What are they next to? Give us two people here. Going to intimidate us here. What story are they next to? I think I have to just rotate quick. So, what's yours? Oh. Tell us what you're going to do. Color? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's uh, um, cream background and black letter forms. Uh, very simple. It'll be in two parts uh, attached to each other. So the lower one could be removable as opposed to the whole thing. Um, I had sent a, a mock-up of, I had printed out a mock-up of what it would look like on the, on the house, if you want to see. Yeah. Yeah, if you have something, do you have something? Yeah. All right, yeah, give us something. Oh, it's on you? Yeah. yeah. Now, where is this store next to? This is, or near? It's next to Mary's. Oh, that's right across the top. You think there is a? Is that on the it's web? on the website. Hold on just a second. I may be able to pick it off the website quick. <clears throat> we can just pass it to the board. Just pass it over here, and then we'll pass it down quick. In the meantime, I'll check and see if I see it. On the board. <clears throat> Gotta make sure I got it. Uh, Is it going to be attached to the building or to the no, exterior post? Uh, there's an existing post okay. uh, that had the previous sign, so we're just going to use that. The purple, yeah. The color, right? <laughs> the purple. <laughs> So this is how it will look right now. There it's on the uh, board now, okay? I didn't see this today, so I didn't load it on the project here. So it's the same thing. Same thing so. Okay, we've got a lot going on here tonight. Larry, start with you. I'm good with the sign. Okay. I'm good. Scott. Good. Jackie, I'm good with it. Good, good, good. Yep. Who wants to make this Larry? Who uh, make Larry dot second all in favor? Uh, aye. 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 And the motion was to grant architectural review. By the letter to the bill inspector, congratulations. We'll see you again. Okay, bye. Okay. Next thing is Allison Barone. She's Hello. So you want to fence a part of your area. So let me bring up yours. The pencil drawing was a little tough, so we maybe we're gonna go to either a like a Google first shot yeah. or a or your yeah. survey. Did you give us a survey? So let me just take a look here. Yeah, right. No, that's okay. 
Sometimes when you do things, I'm just as bad when I do things in Pennsylvania. Uh, 1397 Highway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'll turn this. Um, I think what we want to look here first, yeah. okay, is just a little easier in that. So there is a, see that blue pen right there? See that? We have that blue pen right there. And there's a little blue button. Yeah. Okay, and point that to not in someone's eyes. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> okay, now you're going to show us what you want to do and where you're going to go. Yeah. So that your house is the one story building, I guess. Yeah. So, so that's my house. This is my like, this is like my little walkway over the stream. Um, these are my planters uh, landscaping, and it's already an existing big gravel area, and then that goes further. So what I would like to do is here, here, and over, and here would be like a four foot fence with a gate, and then here to here would be, I'm sorry, here to, uh, you know, here to right about here would be six foot. Okay. So this is going to be, this is like my, this is going to be a garden, this is going to be a fire pit area, my property goes all the way over, and then down. So it's an enclosure, it's a private enclosure, so that I have privacy, my dog can be off leash, I don't have people wondering on my desk, wondering about my business. <laughs> <laughs> so, so this is where, this is normally where my partner is here, here, and then that's where it is. So, I'm confused. one, just w one quick issue, okay, so the fence law in the town of Chester says, okay, fences uh, on, cannot be higher than four feet in your front yard, so I think this is technically considered my front yard if it's the side of your house that's closest to the road. Is that so the way so yes. on a point of light you'll take it that way? Yes. Of course. You take the, the closest to the street, whatever side of the house is closest to the street is considered your front yard. So everything here would be on our side yard? Side or rear, yes. Yeah, side of that. Side or rear yard. This is essentially my backyard. Okay. What about uh, <coughs> fence material color, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. like that? Too. Yeah. So it would either be natural wood, light in color, or white. Okay. Um, the other thing, typically, it's not in our code, but what we like to do is some of the code. Now, if it was like, for instance, like a bunk, if it's a wood fence, <laughs> People love to put the ugly side towards their neighbors. Okay, that's what everybody likes to do. Uh, the vinyl fences, that doesn't happen because they're both exactly the same on both sides. But what we, what I would like to see actually is if there is an uglier side, the uglier side would stay in towards your house and out towards Wood Road or going out towards Kings Highway, the better side would be facing that way. Yeah, no, I think that's fine. I'm gonna be landscaping all of this. It's gonna be a garden, so. I'm fine with having the uglier side inside, although I don't think there'll be an ugly side because I have a pretty nice fence going on. Okay. All right. I'm talking more like those stockade fences. What they do is then they run the slats on the inside and the people on the outside, uh, the other side. I can show you. A, I just got it. A so, picture? Yeah. It's my it's my um, my first uh, proposal back. Right. So is that it's on exactly the same. Each side is exactly the yes, same. Correct. All right. So it's a wooden fence like that. Correct. Is that vinyl or is it wood? No, it's cedar. Actually, you're, you're actually going to go cedar. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, Larry. A question. Are you going to leave it natural? Or are you going to stain it or treat it or something? Yeah. No. I mean, I would I would stain it, but a natural soft color just to seal it. To seal it, right? Right. Correct. Yeah. I, I sort of want it to just blend with nature and not really. If I do anything that's going to stand out, it'll be white vinyl. Okay. I'm good. Um, no, you did an adorable job with your arch and stuff. But my question is, on the side that's considered your front yard, fence will be there. But you have bu those bushes. You did beautiful landscaping on the side. Here, I'm talking here. about, yeah, where it faces King's Highway. Here. Right. Yeah. You have, like, tall bushes or weeds or something that over... That when you come out Wood Road, when they're full grown, 
You can't see. Will they be coming down with the fence? The grasses are like. No, there's know? nothing. There's no fence here. No, there's no, no. fence. No. The landscaping. There's okay. bushes. There's bushes that when you come out Kings Highway, Off Road, right. you can't see. Will they be coming down? Will you take those out before you put the fence? No, in? those. I've had the county come and look at it. I mean, that's where I pull out every day. It's right there, so you can see just fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can't. If you're talking about the grasses that were always there, I mean, they came with the. House. I know you did the the side. But you pulled a lot of stuff out, but that. Uh, yeah. So the trees that I planted are here. They're way way back from the stop sign. Well, she's not asking you to pull them out. She wants you to keep them. No, I don't. You can't, <laughs> you can't see when they when they get tall. You can't see when you make that left onto Kings Highway. You can't see. I've never, I've never had that problem. That's where I, I park here, and that's my stop sign every day. Okay. But the county came anyway, and they approved it all. So. Okay. Okay. Jackie. I'm good with it. I'm good with it. Okay. No problem. Good. Yeah. No problem. Who wants to make a motion to approve architectural? View for this. Somebody I'll make a motion. Harry, second by Jackie. All in favor? All right. All right. All right. All right. We'll have an official letter to you in till next. Great. Well, we're moving quick here. All right. Okay. Uh, Melanie Hunter. Larry Dora. All right, the next thing on our agenda is at 1597 Route 17M. Right, so it's a work session. Uh, Melanie, I guess, would like to purchase the property and then do some site development on there. So let me get the uh, plans up, Larry. Uh, it's best dog in the world. <laughs> Her name is Pinky. That's my mascot. My buddy. Larry, right, there's a pen there. Should be if she left it in. The blue button and then just all right. Sorry, I Matt, are they in the way of the camera or anything? Where's Matt? Where are you, John? Matt gets very upset when he's blocked. Sorry. Thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm most familiar with this. It's a five acre site just outside the village in town, Chester. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. We just say they can't hear. Okay. Uh, Anyway, it's 5.3 acre site. Uh, what we're looking to do is develop it, the building in the center here. It's approximately 25,000 square feet on two levels. Uh, it will, which what Melanie is looking to uh, put in the building is a dance studio along with a daycare center. There'll be some office and retail space that basically supports uh, those uses. Um, what we provided showing on here is the parking which is you know ample for the, the square footage and the uses that we're looking at uh, access obviously would be off of 17m there's that existing bridge in that location uh, what we'd look to do as we go through a planning process is to utilize that obviously as the point of entry we would potentially look at on both sides of it having two lane traffic but uh you'd have to stop to let a car you know pass in either direction because it's only about 13 feet wide uh, you know that that's our initial thoughts on it again as we get into the process and emergency services looks at it and whatnot they may have a different opinion on that uh, other than that it's fairly straightforward at this point uh, we're showing the location for a well to service the site as well as a subsurface septic system and uh, that's it. I mean, again, it's a concept at this point. There's obviously a lot more to be done on it, but she wanted to get initial feedback before she ultimately closes on the property as far as, you know, her intent, the use, she feels suitable in the, in the town. And I guess one other item that Mulaney was asking about, if I can find this thing, is you all probably familiar with that existing red barn as you're coming past. Uh, she 
She wants to see somehow to utilize it. Still not sure how or what capacity, maybe some type of retail space. It really is in the preliminary thoughts. I guess my one concern is one, if, if she was allowed to keep that and she would look to keep the footprint and most of the materials, but just reconstruct it. Uh, if it was allowed, then I guess the issue becomes up front. Is there a problem with two buildings on one lot? something like that so the answer to that question it wouldn't be a problem with two buildings it depends what the development coverage is right. as far as development yeah, coverage right. would dictate that okay right. that wouldn't be and an as issue. far as its location that's probably been there for yeah. 100 years uh so i doubt that that you know would be deemed to be a pre-existing non-conforming so this is directly across from talmage's farm anybody wants yeah. to know where this is directly across from the big red barn book side when you come down the hill and see it, it's directly across the street. So. so Larry, you and I talked, I do have some questions quick for you. you yep. know, um, so obviously would have to have that merged services would have to, you know, right now, I mean, Talmadge told me many years ago that that bridge was designed to take some really heavy farm equipment. So I imagine it could handle the standard car stuff, but I don't know about a fire truck or anything. That right. That could be a problem with construction vehicles you know, with construction right. vehicles. So, I mean, you'd have to get that certified. Right, and I, I think that's one of the conditions in her, you know, as far as the contract, she needs to get some further information or a sign off on, the, you know, the construction and, you know, stability of that bridge, so. So, a couple other questions. So, you're in the local business zone. A school of dance and art is allowed. Great. That's not an issue. Um, the uh, retail could be allowed. That's not an issue. That's okay. The one question I had for you was on the daycare piece of it, though. Sure. Is your intention to run a daycare center, or is this a, a auxiliary to the school of dance and art, where you you know people come in and uh, uh, you know I, I'm not sure what it is. What is the daycare center that Larry mentioned? Before? So we have a business that we're cooperative with that has a letter of intent that if we do succeed in creating this um, community enhancing building that they would love to join us. We kind of have a collaborative business already. Um, we have an enrichment program for their daycare center. So it's an existing business. And so it would kind of go along with the whole, you know, supporting businesses that would exist in this commercial building. All right. So I think you have to, um, uh, if you want to go to the town of Chester code and look at uh, 9829 mm -hmm. subsection H, okay? And there's some, there's a whole section in there on what they call daycare centers. So you would have to provide some kind of outdoor, you know, I'm not seeing this here, but uh, um, I we see it. did include an outdoor. An outdoor play area for the Can kids you? or yes. whatever. All right. So, yeah. look, you're not going to answer this all tonight, right. but these are the type of things that. Oh, I'm not going to get a big eye. You're, <laughs> you're already ahead of the game. So you just have to make sure that you, you know, that you uh, read that section. I wasn't sure if the daycare was just really just something auxiliary to the, the dance, but if it's not, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think that multiple uses in the building would be okay. I haven't uh, analyzed that. I haven't analyzed that care, but it's just a work session. So, right. Yeah. So we'll take a look at it. So. Great. All right. As far as that goes. So, um, it wasn't mentioned to uh, the floodplain. Right. So I'm going to show you that in a minute here. Two other things is you got to make sure that uh, this is, I guess, the Black Meadow Creek. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they call it another name as we go down in that. Mm -hmm. The septic system has to be a minimum, and it looks like it's far enough away, 100 feet from the uh, from the stream, and you never <laughs> do any disturbance within 50 feet of the stream. Right. And that, to me, Barry, I, it looks like you're more than 50 feet from the stream. It will verify that. Yep. So you got to make sure, you know, so that's all in 9830. You want to take a look at that if you're going to file a site plan. So uh, we don't want grass right down to, we don't, you know, we want a buffer on that stream and you can't do any kind of disturbance there. Mm -hmm. So it has to stay natural. We don't want fertilizer <laughs> running in the stream or anything like that. So, so as far as the floodplain, that was a concern I did have, okay. Uh, and we can take a look at that section 52 in Town of Chester Code. But um, so we'll go to that and set. Well, before I go there, I want to go to the Orange County GIS site first.
So during Irene and or Sandy, I'm not sure, or both, I don't know, there was some severe flooding there. Talmadge's farm field was underwater. I don't know how it affected that barn. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to load here. Uh, didn't we get a gig? Uh, are we running under a gig uh, uh, Wi-Fi now or something or no? That's a pretty safe shot. Wow. <laughs> Maybe it's on Scanner's GIS site. Well, I can tell you that the small barn is within the floodplain. There's no question about it. And a portion of the parking lot that we're proposing is in it as right. well. I mean, it, it, it doesn't look like we're going to be too successful here. So I'll try one more time here. But it's not the first time GI site has work here. You know what? Maybe I can get it in coming through the mobile map. Sometimes that works better. It shouldn't do that. It's going to be a mobile. I don't know if this way let me go in any better. It may or may not. That's not going to work tonight. So work at home. I'm not even this after. <coughs> Wetlands cannot be added to the map, so that's not going to be so. All right, so bring your plan back. I mean, there is substantial. You and I talked about this already, that there is substantial uh, floodplain coming in through here, you know, all through here. Yeah, it cuts. That. Yeah, it wraps around. Through here and it cuts through this corner parking lot and up and around. So you need to check section 50. Now, 52, the way Al, I mean, Al can chime in on this too, but uh, chime in, Amy wants to chime in. <laughs> but uh, 52 talks about structures, okay? And, we've been, and it doesn't always preclude you from building, but on the other hand, you can't make the floodplain worse right. or anything like that, and, and, right? And when you design it, you have to do certain things, right? Know? It's like, like for example, if you were within a flood area, right, and uh, you know, let's say you're below the grades, you have to allow the water to run in and out. Like particularly, like if there's a basement, right. you have to have uh, you know vents so the water can run in and run out and not cause damage. And everything needs to be two foot higher than the flood plain elevation electrically. So those are the regulations. What about his parking lot, though? Parking lots are allowed as long as you said that filling in the parking lot does not, you know, further uh, fill in the wetland or the floodplain area and cause problems up or down straight. And should that be blacktop or not being, it, you know, it could be, it could be an, anything, it doesn't matter. No. But if, you, if you're doing it and you're filling it in, like let's say you got to fill it eight feet to make it flat. Yeah. Well, then you're filling in part of the floodplain. So you have to show that it's not going to impact up or down straight. And the answer to your question about the bridge, uh, we've been using 78,000 pounds. 78, for okay. Fire apparatus. Yeah. And what about, Al, the, uh, the existing red barn right here? This right, right, right here. If they wanted to use that and make that a. Uh, Again, that would be the same thing I just outlined. It's just a watch that, you know, that uh, you don't cause further, further damage to the structure. So that you know, you have to if, if you do have that flood, you have to accommodate it so the water can flood in and out without causing damage to the facilities or properties. Because if it causes damage, then you're gonna, you know, you'll probably have flood insurance, but right. they don't want you to have to they don't want to have to pay out. Right? So so they want that, you know, you may have to raise the building a little bit. Put a yeah, actually, it I, I believe it is raised, but not to the point that probably meets the code. Yeah, so maybe you got to jack it up. Jack it up a little bit. Yeah. Or, you know, just like I said, you have to prevent it from causing damage. Yeah. So you might be able to leave it, but raise the first floor. I don't know the building. Yeah, next two of us. Yeah. Barns are real hard to jack up. Yeah. yeah. It's doable. So I don't. Uh, we're going to go down the line with the board and that. But uh, I, you know, any other questions? No, really, just wanted to get initial, you know, input yeah, from the board and just right. Justin, we'll start down this end. Questions, comments? Yeah, I mean, I would. I was just going to ask about the flooding, but if that, you know, I'll kind of took care of that. Well, it's going to have to be covered, and we're going to actually have to see everything, and we're going to have yeah. engineering and all of that. So they know that. So. We'll definitely have to have the answers on that. Is there anything um, 
as far as the bridge, or once you start touching it, it has to be brought up to code, and the bridge can't necessarily stay how it was. Is that going to be a concern at some point? Well, it sounds like most. Well, we don't know if that bridge the bridge has to be investigated. Has to be investigated. Yeah, it's got to be investigated. But you know, it, it, it depends. The big thing is the weight. You know, right? Uh, Not the single. It's fire apparatus. Okay. Very, very heavy. And you know, obviously, you need that for protection of everybody and everything. This is the worst. This is just kind of yeah. like an initial thing. All this is going to have to be engineered and showed us everything. Maybe they don't have to do anything. Maybe. Maybe. We don't know. Yeah. Thank you. No, I have, as a concept, I have no problem with it. John? At this point, I have no problem with it. Mark, any comments, questions? No, this is good. The location's good. Though. Okay, we're going to need to see renderings like the color and things like that. That's going to be, obviously, it's good for you. It's going to be highly visible from us. Very highly trained uh, travel road, so yeah. it's probably a good location for that. So. Jackie. Yeah, I was thinking the same because it's such a beautiful area there that you want to kind of keep that Absolutely. how it looks, and it is kind of that bend. Mm -hmm. So, uh, as a farm, there's probably not a lot of traffic when he's taking the tractor over, but kind of have to take into account where you're hitting 17M there as well, sure. because I mean, moving at 55, mm -hmm. trying to blend in there, so where that hits, that would be a concern. I have no questions right now. I have no problem with the, uh, the concept of what you're trying to do. You know, I had concerns you know, initially about you know the bridge. You know, if, you know, just make sure it can handle you know heavy equipment. You know, you know, uh, cement truck and that sort of thing. Make sure it determine what the rating is on it. Uh, you know, again, the flooding, uh, that sort of thing. <clears throat> um, the barn there very historic every every photographer in the world I think is taking pictures mm -hmm. of that and is posted everywhere so a concern I'd have about is the style of the building mm -hmm. I would like to see something that would blend in to that area to complement that farm it's across the street you know not putting up a you know bare you know metal building or something but something that will architecturally blend with the surrounds absolutely that is my intention I grew up on a farm and Mr. Talmadge is Properties right there, so right. I intend to mirror that and make it a more uh, beautiful gateway to Chester. That's good. All right. We'd have to see some landscaping, Larry. Yeah, yeah, no, as we get into it, yes. The landscaping, lighting, stormwater. So, falls in your court again, but it's, you know, I think that you have a lot of positive things and positive feedback from the board. So. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. much. All right. We're here when you want to come back. No, no. Okay. Um, right. Yeah. Okay. Next thing on our agenda tonight is. Uh, Ernie Tartaglioni, Taglioni, Tartaglioni, and uh, David. Client here, or just you. Okay. So let me bring up your. So there should be a, unless Larry stole it now, right there, just there's a blue pen right there. Grab that blue pen. And the floor is yours. Well, low point members, it's good to see everyone in person, let's say as well. Apparently, I'm presenting two projects tonight. Uh, one is erroneous. Uh, that's the address that's on our uh, cover letter and application. And uh, we apologize for that inconvenience. The correct address is 62 Blitz Road. And uh, that's the actually the address we use on our plans. And uh, here representing Sugarloaf uh, Square Incorporated, Ernie Tataglioni is the uh, managing member of that LLC. So they've owned the property and the two buildings that exist for quite a few years. 
and it's been a financial burden to to carry the buildings. They've been vacant for quite a uh, a lot of time. Uh, hasn't gotten a lot of interest as far as the market value or as far as the place. So the owner is asking to convert the two buildings and add a third for apartments. So our proposal to you included three plans. One was an existing plan. The other is the proposed plan uh, showing the existing building, which is about 5,700 square feet. We wanted to add two, keep that footprint and add two floors to it. This is the other existing building. It's about 4,300 square feet. We wanted to add two floors to that. And then two additional buildings of the same type of footprint. Uh, again, three stories, which would result in about 57 apartments or units. To accomplish uh, this, actually, many, many years ago, a second building was approved by this board, but was never constructed. Not for an apartment use, but you know, within the zone at that time. Uh, we uh, did some research with real estate and found that the mix of studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, would work very well. Uh, it would create a lot of pedestrian traffic in the area to support the stores and restaurants. It, I mean, the uh, accessibility by foot and by bicycle is great to that whole area and even in supporting the Sugarloaf Path, which uh, you know, we do, my wife and I, many a time. To accomplish this, we're asking uh, to go through the process of adding multifamily to the current LBSL zone. Now, multiple, multiple family is only occurs in the, I believe, the SR6 uh, zone of the town of Chester. It's the uh, valid uh, use in that zone. Uh, it is not allowed in the uh, LBSL zone. So to proceed with this, we are asking for the board's direction and input to see what could be done to add multifamily to that zone. Not asking for the zone to be changed. Uh, it is limited to sugar loaf alone, but we're asking that it multiple family be added to uh, as a permitted use within that zone. On the third page that we show, we do uh, we provided we show a breakdown of uh, the usable area and how the apartments could also be uh, broken down by building and by section. And we believe right now the parking that's shown uh, would accommodate the amount of units proposed. In addition uh, to that, the uh, uh, access uh, to the site currently, and then a secondary access that was shown on the second uh, page could be accomplished to provide easy uh, maneuverability in and out of the current site. We believe it's a viable option. We believe it has a great deal of economic feasibility. We surely believe that it would increase and help the Sugarloaf area quite a bit. And uh, we look forward to your comments and your direction. So one question, David. This is actually, this is owned by him, right? This is goes out to Wood Road. There's a, a section of land that that's always been there, if I remember correctly. Correct. So here, here lies the problem, okay? Uh, the planning board, unless the town board gives us direction to waive something, uh, give variances to something, which we at times have, uh, but the one thing we definitely don't have is to uh, change zoning or do anything like that, okay? We can do certain things, uh, dimensional, mostly it's dimensional end of it, things like that. They give us some leeway here, but we don't have the right to, uh, you know, approve something, uh, put a factory in the middle of a housing development or something. I'm being facetious here, but we don't have a right to do that. Uh, you basically have two paths to go, okay? One could be going to the Zoning Board of Appeals and asking for a use variance, right? Uh, I can't speak for the Zoning Board of Appeals. I do not speak for them. I ran the Zoning Board of Appeals for about seven years. And I can tell you, uh, the state of New York has, uh, it's four to five, four or five questions. Is it four? It's a four part test. It's a four part test. Okay. And if you fail or any part of the four part test, you automatically lose. OK, 
okay? I think you would fail all four parts. So you wouldn't stand a chance, but I can't guarantee that. I mean, the board could make their own decisions. They're pretty, uh, they do their homework. They do a lot of things. And, you know, my gut guess is that I think you would have a difficult thing. So I think what you really need to do is to petition the town board to do what you said, uh, not to spot zone this piece of property, uh, is to add, I think currently there might not, and don't quote me on this, I'll get in trouble for this, but 17 uses in the, in the LBSL zone, they add an 18th, or if there's 14 uses, you're adding a 15th use, which could be a, a special permitted use uh, or a use uh, for planning board's approval. Special permitted uses could either be given to the planning board to make that decision, or the town board issues a special permitted use and then you come back to the planning board because then you have the use allowed. I don't know what they would choose to do, but uh, you know, so I think the case you have to make is really to the town board. You know, economically it may, you know, I think you have to come in and show how it could boost traffic and, you know, and economically good good for the Hamlet and that, but it's kind of a fall in deaf ears here. I mean, uh, we couldn't really do anything. The other question I would want to ask you too is if you were successful in that, what about sewer, water? Is there, you know, there's issues, there's more and more big businesses coming in now. So the residents of Sugar Oak are worried about their water system, okay? We have another large project coming in. We're gonna to have to do our due diligence here to, to handle that part of it. You know, 50 some odd apartments, you know, there's a formula you'd come up and tell us and you, you know what you're doing. Uh, exactly how much water you're going to use and so on and so forth. Sewer, I don't know. Again, that's a question that would have to be asked to the town. Is that in the sewer district? Probably is because you have the buildings there and all that, but the additional sewer and does this the town have sewer capacity to handle that? I can't answer any of those questions, you know, they, they would have to handle that. So, you know, um, well, you know, uh, we wanted to follow the process and so we submitted to the building department, the building department referred us to you. And so we, I, I think initially I agree with the town board. So if it would be within your province to refer us to the town board to make that presentation, I, uh, I Yeah, so typically, Dave, the, 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 the planner wouldn't refer for a zone change. There's generally a referral for a variance to the zoning board of appeals. Uh, you could indicate that you made this application and then you can, you can submit a petition. Pretty sure if you look at the zoning code, there's a kind of follow the bouncing ball protocol to make a zone change petition to the town board. Mm -hmm. um, and you would just follow that process. Sure. So board members, Larry. Um, Knowing that we're not here to approve anything. No, no, it, it, I understand. Um, I have a lot of reservations because that's not the way, you know, the area's not zoned for. So, you know, it's not really up to our purview mm -hmm. to, um, to approve it, but as one of the things you just stated, you know, I don't know what the impact of 57 units are gonna be for the sewer and water for the area. But we, there's some current concerns there already. So that would require a study and, uh, and talking to the different agencies to see if they could handle it. You know, it's, it's just right off the bat there. And then plus it, it's a major change for the for that area, you know, everything is single family home there. So you know, you're talking going to multifamily, it's changing. Uh, I, I'm sure what, what word to use, but it, it's a major change to that, to that area. And so, you know, we need a lot of input from, you know, the residents there, you know, you know, see what they think about it. So, you know, again, you know, it's really up to the zoning board of addressment to decide whether it's viable or not? No, it's the town board. Or town board? Or, yeah, sorry, town board. Yeah, not the zoning board. We have to go to the town board. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not really up to us. You know, we look at the project and see, you know, what impact it has in the town and that sort of thing. So, well, I appreciate your thoughts and you do, but we do have a site. We do have two buildings that are not thriving, and the area is not thriving. So, this would be a good opportunity and a good viable use to help the area thrive. Dot any um no i just think there's a lot of hurdles for you to go through before we we get any more say on it yeah we have no say yeah. it. we have zero say at this point jackie i do i think that's true it's going to change the whole aesthetic and 
traffic, water, sewer, all of the basic have to really be addressed first. And then the quality, quality of life, how it affects the whole Hamlet. That's, but there is a lot to go through before we have any say on it. So. Uh, I certainly appreciate what the owner's concerns are, and this is definitely a avenue of doing that, but I'm not exactly sure how you're going to get there. John? I have no real comment other than the book. Justin? Um, really, most of it's been said, but I mean, I would add that this would be a tremendous change for Sugarloaf if this were to happen. I think we have to look into that, what direction we're looking for, for Sugarloaf to go in general. I think the town board has to make those decisions, though, you know what I'm saying? That's, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what the comprehensive plan ever said for Sugarloaf. I don't know. I we can research all that, but it's really an issue that the town board has to make. You know, there will be public comment. I mean, it's going to be obviously they have to hold a public hearing. At least one public hearing is going to have to hold. Could it be multiple public hearings? Might have to be held. It's a possibility they have to change a comprehensive plan. They might have to uh, and then change, have another public hearing to change the zoning and so on and so forth. So the public will have a lot of time to make comments and, uh, and you know, what they think. So. All right. Absolutely. It's the best we can say to you. So we don't write referrals to the town board. I think it's very simple. You just got to, there might be a process like they've said. There certainly is a zone change uh, amendment process in the in, in the zoning coordinates. I don't remember at the top of my head, but I'm relatively certain it's in there. We'll follow this. Okay. And then get in contact with uh, Linda Zavala. Sure. Now, can get yourself on an agenda item and, you know, make your case to them. Sure. Okay. Thank you very much. Everyone. Have a great evening. Okay. Thank Thanks. <laughs> Okay. You know, this was a long agenda tonight. Uh, two more things left. We're rock and rolling here. So. And everybody seems to be enjoying our county board meeting and staying here tonight. So we're not used to this, especially being under Zoom, looking at little boxes. Um, next thing on our agenda is Ryan Westervelt, Jeremy Valentine. Is client here too or no? No, he's uh, I just need to learn the case right now. Okay, so everybody knows this. They were here uh, not last meeting, the one before, I think, no, right? The one before, yeah. The one before they, they, his client purchased the LaRue sawmill, uh, fixed it up, uh, the buildings that were there, uh, and uh, did some work around the house and rented the house and all that other stuff to go along with it. Uh, I personally think he did a nice job in there. I told him that already. I thought he did a nice job. But now he wants to build an 8,100 square foot warehouse uh, here in addition. And also there's a green, I think it's green, it's a green barn. barn wants to add basically kind of doubling size of it to the right hand side, well, the back, looking out from the road. And he would probably make that the same color as yeah, the um, sort of uh, uh, renderings, things like Monday. Yeah, he did. Um, we have renderings on it. It's so. the same color, same style. That he has there now. So let's bring up the, and then Al, we're going to switch over to you in a minute here. Now, I'm sorry, we didn't ask any questions about the last one, but it was really not much we could do with right. him. Yeah, it's, no, that's fine. You know, and, so. and one of the things is uh, I never got the revised plan. I looked at it very quickly. And a lot of my comments that I wrote to you was not any longer appropriate. All right. Well, but, you'll, uh, you'll tell us that in, in a second here. Yeah, so. Whenever you're ready. So just refresh the board real quick again, what we're trying to do here. So this is the old room sawmill that he bought three years ago or so? Oh. Well, around two years ago. Uh, we were on the board to convert the sawmill into a warehouse, which he has done. Um, we got PPW approval for the entrance. <laughs> the landscaping in the front, there's a fence up here with the main entrance. He's looking to build another warehouse, 8,100 square feet up hill of the existing warehouse and down here where the barn is let me scroll down a little bit yeah there's the green barn now with like one side open he wants to increase the size of that just for more storage and right now this is that red siding not the existing and all those are going to match that same siding and style okay well, are you did submit a surrendering uh back here
So the first couple. So that is the existing, that's the old guru. So I'm that he's converted this to the rendering of what that looks like as the warehouse. That is the, this part here is the green barn in the back that you're looking to basically double size of. But the whole thing would be updated to match the siding style of the existing warehouse. And the third one, that is when we're looking to build on the top of the property. The bigger, that's the 81 square, 8100 square foot warehouse he's proposing. Okay. So, Al, let's go back to any comments or questions you have. I, I don't need to bring your report up. So. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, just make sure that the lighting needs have the codes, which I assume you were uh, working on. Yeah, we were kind of looking up the lighting plan we had done originally. The same guy did that, so he incorporated the light, the original approval with this plan. So it's Good. all kind of one lighting plan, which is well, what that uh, was. Did you give us the uh, sanitary details? No, I still got to be solved. That's what you Okay. It's a little bit of a swamp there right now. Yeah, 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 dry yeah, out a bit. Explain what you're doing with the wells. Yeah. So he has the well lives over here. We're gonna do I figure a four hour test, the existing bar stabilization test to get a yield yeah, on the well. Okay. And just give it a gosh and kind of go from there. Yes. Hopefully it comes up fine. I saw you did get a ship outside. Yep. Good luck with that. Our response two months ago, I think it was. Yeah. Well, I, I, I know you did that, but I said did hmm? you also. Did you ever say many feet? Um, no, I just made a comment. That no, we didn't do the traffic, so I just used the IPE. Okay, and just said this is that was adequate for this use. I remember it's something like yeah. two trips an hour, I think. Right, this size warehouse. Yeah. 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 And your client did a good job explaining what he was doing. And he's right. not, it's not the it's a quiet third time around. It's much smaller. Oh, okay. So basically, uh, I believe we did do GML, correct? The, the 239s? Yeah, I don't think we've submitted these yet. So, so this I think is it's appropriate to do that now. Yeah, I think we're ready to go to submit. Now. We're going to have to do it. Uh, 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 two thirty nine to the county and two thirty nine to the public hearing. Yeah, that's so otherwise, you were okay. Why the well test? Just curiosity. I mean, well, we, he, he's using it for a lot more than originally uh, anticipated. Right. Is there any additional bathrooms or? He's not going to have um, bathrooms up in this building. So we will Just have some additional work, water yeah. needs. So and so forth. But so we we don't know, need much. We got to make sure he has at least five gallons a minute. Okay, all right. I think the employee sounds like one. I got on top of my head maybe eighteen and a fifteen gallon a day per person. Yeah, right here. We're saving like twelve. Well, it's not using much water. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um. Things. I know today there's a, a trail that's been parked down here <laughs> well, he for want to see quite trail. a long time. That's a good block. Um, you know, for months and months. Is that going to go away once they do the additions? I'll have that, Brian. Right. I'm not sure myself. You know, because it's been there a long time. So I, I'm assuming he's probably using it for storage. By the for, Yeah. Okay. It's been there for a long time. So I trust that will go away once the buildings are gone. Um, up on this entrance up here, um, I mean, it was supposed to have been a lot of, uh, you know, shrubs and trees uh, put up there, but right now it's pretty pretty open. And I don't know, I'm not so sure they had actually put in all the landscaping they were supposed to. Where are we? Uh, here's the entrance. Up around, up around here, yeah. You, you drive along there and it's you can really see all in here. I, uh, it seems to me that the landscaping isn't there. That should have been there. so I can I guess have to admit I haven't been to the site since probably the first time here was a couple of years ago. I'm I just following up. I'll take a look. Yeah. So my concern is, did he do what he said he was supposed to do on when we granted the you know the project? You know, last time he came before the board. Um, the you know as long as he conforms to all the you know uh, lighting, you know, make sure he has uh, on here uh, you know his lighting plan. You know details of the lights he's going to use 
Yeah. Oh yes, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Yes, it is on this plan. You did. So, um, yeah, the on the existing building uh, seems like there's an overabundance of lighting. Yeah. You know, on there now, and it's uh, sort of, you know, goes out beyond the property line. So I know they're basically, you know, heading, you know, facing downwards, but they sort of downwards and out a little bit. So it, it does broadcast out, and really uh, uh, some of the neighbors could be able to respond to that. <laughs> We're probably not too happy about it. Now I've driven there a night to see, and I think at the last meeting I made a comment about it that it's broadcasting out instead of going downward so i do have a concern about that so i like to see that first but yeah, the lights are dark sky in town where they are fully shielded i can't they're not shielded <laughs> oh no they're not shielded they basically face down pretty much at a uh, 80 degree angle something like that and they're not shielded so they're led lights and they're not shielding is this shielding around the light so it directs where the light's going those lights are not shielded. Shielding is where the light, the bulb itself, is not. You can't see the bulb. You can see them. I know I drove by and I, I could see them. So it's they're not really conforming. That's my take on it. And I, and I think if it goes to public comment, you're going to have neighbors that are probably going to say the same thing. So other than that, that's all I have to moment. Alexi, you want to make any comments on the landscaping and the lighting? Um, the landscaping, we changed just a little bit. We staggered the trees because of the topography of the property and the way they were going to grow in would fill in better. So we staggered and did two rows. Um, so he did do all of the trees and then some actually. So I actually physically went there and counted to make sure before I issued the CFO that all the plantings were. We just changed the layout just a little bit because if it was too far in front, the visual being able to pull in and out was going to be difficult. So we staggered them front to back so when they grew in and filled in, they would be nice and full and you would get nice full coverage. Instead of when they're too compact, they end up dying. Um, so we staggered them. Um, and then when the DPW gave them for the extra entrance, we made sure that we had um, spacing on the other side. So, but to the far, to the left, all of those plantings over there, all of these plantings are here, but this is the entrance coming in. So you couldn't come right to the end because you were gonna, uh, your sight distance wasn't gonna be all that great. So instead of doing one row compacted, we staggered. Where it's full coverage, you had one here, the second one was just set back just a little bit. Then the, the one in front, and then one set back just a little bit. So it looks like two rows. This way, when the plants, when the trees grew in, they would grow in nice and full. So it would then probably be helpful, Jeremy, if you showed it. Just in conditions. Yeah. yeah. I didn't want to take a look. I would take a look at the lighting also. You want the pitch? <laughs> um, as far as the lighting goes, um, they all are downward facing. I think there's one, on, if you scroll up, Don. Yeah. What do you want? So, like, a couple, yeah. There's, she wants you not to talk to me. Like, that's what she wants. One. I believe light that's over here by one of the bays that's outward just a little bit, but it's facing this direction, does not spill past the property line. The other ones are all downward facing and are completely shielded because there's a plastic cover. It's fully encased. So that is considered shielded. So, um, I mean, we could agree to disagree all day, but it's the, the pictures of the the lighting fixtures were on the plans and complied with the lighting code. There is a lot of lights, but that's what was approved. 
and I believe he's been turning them off at night. Oh. I mean, you can talk to Ryan and just see if it would do some of the lights there or something, take some of them off. Maybe does he really need all the lighting? So. And when this was first an issue back when, I had gotten a, a complaint when it was first done on the lighting on the barn. Um, unfortunately, and I don't mean to sound, you know, like I'm being a certain way, but just because you can see a light doesn't mean that it's trespassing. So the barn has a light that's also the same fixture that's on the warehouses all around on the barn that's down here is also downward facing, but it, you know, the, that side of the barn faces the street. So if the light is on, yes, you can see the light, but it's not trespassing off the property because the road is still dark. You can see a light, but it's not trespassing off the property. Okay, Don? Um, on the 1,800 square feet that you're adding to the existing barn, is that going to have a bathroom or is that just garages? No, it's not have it. That's just three stories. Okay. That's all. Gotcha. So the, the, um, the new warehouse part is going to have a bathroom. Is it going to increase? How much is it increasing the business, like the trucking and the traffic? And do we know what the, it's expected to be? That was, yeah, was it? Q12 is close. Sorry. Right. Let's see. So he's looking possibly to three different little warehouses that he can rent out. And for the whole project, you're looking at about two trips an hour is what the ID was said it's going to generate and how much additional truck traffic we're looking at. I've been around, I used to live closer, but have you seen like an increased traffic rate since he built this? Get more trucks or anything else? He has a whole lot of some. A little bit further away. I mean, yeah. we couldn't answer that. We would have to almost have to sit up and watch. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's so not. It's just going that's to. That's what we'll look at. The um, IT says about two trucks an hour. It'll just start so it's, it's not increasing hours. It's not increasing anything like that. It's the light hours. We were originally approved for. And the trees look great. If the, once the trees grow in, they'll yeah, they'll be nicely nice and, and, and nice cover. Yeah, the stack. The warm. first two, I'm sure it's. Um, will say that first year or two that tree is just struggling to survive. Yeah. Now Once it's been it's right. two years or so. Now they're gonna really start growing. Yeah. I'd uh, like to echo what Larry was bringing up with the lighting. It understood that it doesn't protrude, but if I'm gonna go take some pictures, please um, do because it's pictures doing daily so you can see the light fixtures, see what they are, and also fix the landscaping that the trees are it's two rows. I'll show them their revised plans and we do show what's really there. Like I said, well, I got to take a look at the lighting myself. But other than that, the existing, they did a great job with it as long as they keep it within that form. Chuck. Um, the only thing I, <clears throat> you're, you're put, going to put in an additional bathroom, I'm assuming, that it will increase the sewer and is the existing solar. We're setting a whole new septic for it. Okay. Yeah. Because of that reason. It's all right. Yeah. You okay? Yep. All right. So, Melissa will submit the 239 to Orange County Planning. I, we're okay. Everybody's okay with it going out to Orange County Planning. Mm -hmm. I think we have enough documents here just for them to see. What? You mentioned DPW, too? DPW. Okay. has to go to them both. So, okay. you'll have to go to DPW and to Orange County Planning. Sorry. Just to refresh my memory. Do I send DPW first, or you said the town sends the first submission to DPW? We submit. Oh, yes. copies? We have to submit. All right. Okay. Uh, we submit electronically to both, yeah. right? Yes. Oh, yeah, so we don't need anchor. Although sometimes our time forward planning will last for yeah. a plan set. Yeah. A, fit, a physical plan set. Planning has been one of the plans. Yeah, they have. Yeah. Okay. Lately, they may. So, I mean, you know, if they need so, something, we'll give it to them. Yeah, right? they so far I haven't no. received that okay. from them. I have yeah, to ask for that. If they brought me they didn't ask for one. Maybe it depends on the reviewer in the village of Goshen. They're asking for them every time, and it kind of throws yeah. a monkey wrench into the three day right. time period. Right. Uh, so they're, they're not asking. No, just, okay. so so we'll check with Megan, but okay. uh, yeah. she has not asked us for hard copy. Yeah. 
you know, we, we've been submitting, you know, electronically for a long time. So we don't like paper. So. Uh, okay, so we'll send that off. Uh, we'll let you know. Remember, they have 30 days to respond. I guess the next step after this would be we'll have to make a decision whether this goes for a public hearing or not. Uh, but we're not in that position at this point in time. All right, so we can have the ability to weigh this or not. So we'll, we'll have another discussion when we get uh, the county's reports back. And that, so. Al, everything else is good? I'm good. Okay. All right, Chairman. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Eight minutes after eight, and went through seven things and I'm ready. Um, so Alexa had drawn up and the town drew it up into a local law format. Uh, the town of Chester has many illegal short-term rentals and has, uh, and Alexa gets many, many calls on uh, opening a short-term rental, which some want to call it Airbnb, Verbo, or anything like whatever you want to call it, but the real name is a short-term rental. It covers all, those are just companies, Airbnb and so on and so forth. Now. So Alexa drew up a, a, a local law. She went to the town board. The town board then uh, requested uh, the town attorney to draw up a local law uh, and local law format uh, that could be adopted by the town board. Prior to adopting, well, prior to adopting by the town board, two things have to happen. The town of Chester Planning Board has to review the local law and make our comments. And the Orange County Planning Department, uh, just like you heard before, it came back already? Did it come back today? It didn't come back signed. I got the email before. Okay. It sends it to you, not to us. <laughs> so uh, the Orange County Planning Department has to come up with a response to uh, what they said, did they call that a local determination or, or what? Yeah. Well, you'll give it to Melissa and we can send it to the board. It's really not us anyway. It's the town that submitted it yeah. to the Orange So they called it a local determination is what they call it. So it was like one typo. And then the one that you and I had discussed that we might, I might just consider removing. Okay. They had a comment on that, but that was it. So Melissa sent the local law even though it's on the website, anybody wants to see it, it's on the town of Chester's website under local laws, under proposed local laws. There's two little things there, existing or draft, and ones that have already been approved and ones that are proposed. So the local law is out there. Uh, so Melissa sent it to everybody, asked everybody to take a look at it because we need to give a report back to the town board. The town board is going to have a public hearing like next Wednesday night. Uh, for anybody who wants to come in, this is where the public has a chance to come in, read the local law, and make any comments you want to make. So uh, that's not not to this board. It will be here, but for the town board, not for this board, all right? So what we're here tonight is just to discuss the local law and what our what our comments might be. So so uh, I'm just going to bring it up quick. Uh, oh, boy, what's it right here? Okay, so I had, I, I already spoke to Alexa about this. I had two questions in that, and then we'll go down the line. Anybody else has any comments or questions about it? So w one of my questions, I don't even know where it is. I know where the second one is here. I, I guess uh, it talked about uh, expanding the driveways, okay, uh, if they were going to create a, a uh, short-term rental. I questioned that, saying that if somebody wanted to make a little bit bigger driveway, make their turnaround be a little bit bigger, something like that. I don't know if that's any different than a resident out there wanting to change your driveway or make it any different. A5H. So A5H. Section A? Yeah, 77A. Oh, 77, okay. Yeah. A5 and then down to H. So this was one comment I had. No additional parking spaces may be added or construction constructed between the primary residential structure and the street. So I just questioned that saying that uh, this would be one comment I would have that uh, I'm not sure that that's something we want to do. If the uh, they need to put a wider turnaround or do, how to do anything that would make it better for the parking there, I'm not sure we should restrict them from doing that. So that was one of the comments I had. And then we'll hear what others have to say. The other one is I found confusing which was 77, I think it was seven, right? 77. Yeah, that was, um, I wasn't sure what this meant. Okay, so 
I, this was a, a run on sentence that I wasn't quite sure. It said official notification for each instance a short term rental property is rented must be made to the town of Chester no less than 24 hours prior and no more than 30 days prior to each use of the short term rental property for a short term rental. So uh, my question here was, does this mean that somebody's got to call Alexa or let somebody know every time that, that, that Airbnb rents something or or Verbo or whoever it is, this matter who it is. Uh, so I wasn't quite sure what this meant. I just got a little confused reading this. I don't think that, uh, I think they need to, Alexa and I already talked about this. It was actually her idea, not my idea. I like to steal things, but uh, this was her idea. But that they would have to keep a, what do you call it, a registry? A registry. That's, uh, that Alexa can get to see at any time or anything like that. They would have a regular registry, similar to what probably a hotel has or something like that. But not, I, I just don't know that every time they're going to rent something, they get on the phone, put, you know, get on Alexa's phone or call Melissa or somebody on the phone and say, hey, we're going to rent this tomorrow here or something like that. Yeah, so, I agree. I didn't think. Yeah, so. I, all the way through. Now, um, that one. Alexa didn't sit down and do all this. This no, was stolen from. Uh, <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, so I can tell you, I can, if you're interested, yeah, what is uh, I, I can tell, I can tell I you, I ask you what this meant. Here. What is, so, the about that? instances that I've been involved in, or an instance, was property owner uh, rented out, what a house not to live there, rented out the property to person A, person A then rented it out, subleased it, which is prohibited here, to person B, who then had a party and invited people, like 50 people, every weekend, different, and they would pay a fee, and it was in a residential neighborhood, and it became a party house, and it was a serious problem. And it was a real serious problem because the chief of police lived in the neighborhood. So, um, but the idea was that you, so when you try, when you went to the, when the police went to the party and said, who's in charge, had no idea. They got they got a notification from, from whomever that they could come to the party at this house and then they would leave. So the idea behind that is when a, when a residence has got to be leased or taken out that there's a notification to the municipality to say who's in charge, who's going to be there, people are going to be there, just for not that you can't do it, but the community knows what's going on. Now that's a little cumbersome. And it's a little cumbersome to come through the, the uh, building inspector, right? Because but it te- it, it's intended to be a law enforcement tool. But if, if so, you know, somebody comes up from the city and wants to rent a property in Sugar Oak, which is a, has their permits and has everything they want. So on the so rent, they call up on, or they go to the Airbnb or Virgo or whoever is renting this. Uh, and they say, okay, it's Thursday afternoon. Is that available? It's great. It's available. They have to notify Alexa that they're coming in this weekend. Should that's it be what like it a says. standard email, maybe? Like it doesn't have to be a phone call. The standard procedure that it just goes off to a certain email designated that's designated email, for that right. so that you're only checking that and knowing that's being updated when it happens. My other comment, just if I can, my other comment on this is that you don't really know what's going to work and what's not going to work until you implement it because this is an evolving situation. And as more tourism comes into the area, you're gonna have more types of uh, this property being utilized. I can tell you across the street from my office in Goshen, there is an Airbnb and people are in and out of there all the time. And you know what? We didn't know they're there. Very quiet, very, it, you know, it was fine. But the issue is when, the, when, you, when there is a problem, you wanna know who to get in touch with. That, that, that's what that's all about. But wouldn't it be someone to get in touch with? Part of the law states there has to be a uh, either the owner has to be available and or what what do we call it? A registered agent has to be available. Wouldn't we just go to them and say, fix it? I, these are your comments. I just thought I would, you know, you can make those comments, whatever. That's where that comes from. Okay. I know. Scott changed it to a run on sentence. My grammar was perfect when I wrote this. <laughs> <laughs> So we're not here to change the law tonight. We're only here to respond back to the town board and give them response. That's all we're here tonight. So, I mean, we can just say that we think this might be a run on sentence or something that Scott shouldn't have put in. wouldn't say it that way. But, uh, well, you, 
listen, it's up to the board. They're your comments. Right. If you want to say it may be un, uh, burdensome and you may want to find a different way to do that. I would expect that most of these, we expect in the village of Goshen, we're going to make changes as, as things happen and try and work actually collaboratively with Airbnb because they don't have a problem with their people either. Right. right? So done correctly, I think it could work, but you got to be able to control it. Right. Look, something has to be done. So I, I hear Alexis tells me nightmare stories in the town already. And then we all know, and I'm sure everybody in the room knows, one that's running around. There's Airbnbs that are running around that are not registered and not controlled or anything like that. So the town is making, Alex is making an effort and the town's making an effort to do this. So, uh, all right, before I turn it over to the rest of the board members, I encourage everybody here, you can go to the town of Chester's website. The local law is out there. It's on the website. It says local laws. I think you have to go to proposed local laws. You'll see the law. What you're seeing here now is I picked it right off the website. Uh, off the net. You should read it because uh, it does affect the town and everything like that. And your time to come will be next Wednesday. That's when you're going to be able to make the comments, okay? We're just going to submit orders in writing to the town board. But you should go to the meeting. It affects a lot of people in the town, and uh, they could very well be coming to your neighborhood soon, as they would say, uh, you never know. So, I mean, you would want this to be as good law as it can be. And I do agree with Dave also. I think unfortunately most governments pass laws but never go back and take a look and are they successful are they doing the right thing should they be changed are they obsolete you know all kinds of things and stuff like that so i think you know they it's something that always has to be should be sure. a, a live document that's constantly worked on and so, and so, forth. so barry uh i share your concern about the parking i know i've chatted in emails with alexa um it, i'd rather have the ability to have them expand their driveway and parking area so there's no wash street parking if they can't change their existing driveway or parking you may get maybe you've had a four bedroom house you may have four cars there to come and then it may overflow into the street and I'd, I'd rather not have you know parking out on the street if it can be you know put on the property so uh, i don't have it i would like to see that you know they can you know expand their parking area the driveway parking area so they can accommodate all of the vehicles that come um, on the property um, the the other is i also chatted with alexa about this <clears throat> i would like to see in the law a formal in there saying all right uh, if i have um four bedrooms you know you're allowed two people per bedroom I'd like to see that in the law. I know that Alexa's putting it on the application, and I understand that. Um, but people who are going to want to have, a, you know, this capability to rent out their house, they're going to look at the local law. I like to. I'd like to see that if it's right up front, saying, "All right, if I have a four-bedroom house, I can have up to eight people rent the house." You know, in, in the rental. Yeah, so they know it right there as opposed to after the fact going for their application and that sort of thing. I know that according to building code, you determine the number of people based on square footage. I understand that. But my concern about that is you could have a house could have a large room. For example, I have a three car garage and above that I have a large room. And it's six hundred and sixty square feet. If the formula is sixty square feet per person you could have 11 people in that room that's a lot i don't know you know that's my concern that that could happen not saying it will but possibly some people may want to push it so i'm more on having it saying all right it's x amount of people per bedroom in fact the new york state fair housing authority has ruled that their belief is that say, stating that it's limited to two people per bedroom is fair and reasonable. And that's the Fair Housing you know, Bureau of New York State. So I'd like to have it see, have some verbiage about that so people, when they see the law, they know, all right, I can do X amount of people. I mean, that's my preference. Other than that, I think the law is great. I think it's a great start. I think Alexa did a fabulous job. Um, as far as the noise, though, would Alexa be responsible? Wouldn't they be calling the police department if a party got out of hand? That would be wouldn't both. They? 
That so there know, would be notified. If, if it's in the evening, then it would be the police department. So um, they would be notified also of who is renting the Airbnb. Well, they would get a copy of my registry, probably properties that um, you know that are registered for Airbnbs. I would make sure PD has a copy as well. This way, he knows they know um, who the registered properties are. This way, we keep them. Yeah, because you don't want to. Right you don't want to go out and get punched. <laughs> Well, yeah, my taste. Yeah. But, um, if it's in the evening, then it would be a PD issue. But there is, I did put in the code um, under F 77 A 5 F. One of the requirements is clear signage required to be posted within the short term rental property to ensure tenants, guests, and invitees um, understand the local ordinances occupancy limits parking and garbage rules and have the number to a local contact so the local ordinances would include noise so this way i would have it posted in several areas of the rental this way the um you know tenants are aware of what the local ordinances are Especially and there has to be local contacts. In other words, it yeah. can't be an absent. It could be an absentee landlord, but there has to be a local no, person. There has to be somebody yeah. in Madison County. Right. So if the property owner is not in Orange County, then there has to be a registered There's agent native, right. that is within the county that can be contacted in case of anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the parking, I think, yeah, there, but there has to be some restrictions because most of these blend into residential areas. Right. So if they came and they, you know, wanted to pave their entire front lawn so that the cars could. Well, then that's be, what, I, you know, and Larry made a good point with that because Don and I had also discussed that. Um, so I might change, you know, no additional parking spaces between um the primary residence in the street without um, the permission of the building department or right. the building inspector or whatever. Because I also don't want to create more impervious surfaces right. and have water runoff, um, you know, especially during the winter time. I don't want people to think that they can expand their driveway opening because that's not allowed. So maybe, you know, yeah, I would like to see if somebody has a very large parcel and they wanted to expand their driveway technically by code they don't need a permit for that you know if they wanted to do a, a turnaround you know or a larger area in front of their garage doors technically they don't need a permit for that but if they want to enlarge the parking area coming between the house and the street then i would i'm going to be inclined to change this without permission um, of the building inspector. So this way I can at least see what it is they're doing and make sure that there's no extra water runoff going onto the streets. And you would think because it's, if they want to attract people there, they're not going to want to make it look right. So hopefully, but there's really nothing to contain that. Right. So, I mean, I think it, I, you did a great job. You really did. You covered everything. No, so, I'm good. The onesie twosies that this becomes an issue for, I think, has anybody been at a VRBO been, you know, one of these things before? Like, I don't think it's that pervasive of an issue where we need to delve down too deeply. I think the fact that we're coming out with a law that it is a uh, permit and that you need to be on some sort of registry alone is going to prevent a lot of this stuff um, so again I, I think allowing this to kind of mold as we go on to see where we can fine-tune it mm -hmm. is definitely deep, deep, deep down pretty pretty hard on the, the stuff which is great but I just don't want to over restrict it because now well, I'll tell you where I got a lot of it okay it's Department of State okay. and Department of State came out with you know all over the country a guideline for the Airbnbs because it came became so popular. Sure. So they gave us kind of like a guideline 
to what we should put in our local laws right. to try and help govern the situation so it, you don't have to keep going back to change, right. change it all. So I figured, okay, I'll do it all in one shot so we don't have to touch it again, hopefully for a while, see what works. If anything really needs to get critiqued later on, then okay, we see what's working, what is it, what do we have to do to fix it? You know, but I figured the more we did to govern it, then in one shot would kind of, yeah. you know, take care of it. All. At least you know there's going to be big parties at Larry's house. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Only 11 people, though. <laughs> Mark, I agree with you. I mean, I, I rented a bunch up in Lake Placid area. Yeah. And I mean, you're going to people's houses. Right. It's really a nice. Right. Some of them are absolutely beautiful, beautiful. You know, I mean, it's also to protect the owners of the property, too, because you want to make sure that you're not going to put some kind of party rager, you know, that's going to come and destroy somebody's house that they've just spent, you know, six, seven, eight hundred thousand dollars on, and they're trying to, you know, pay their property taxes by using it as an Airbnb, you right. know, so, and to protect the residents that are surrounding that Airbnb, to make sure that they have their peace and quiet and everything else. So 100%. I had to kind of take it as a whole. Yep. John. Um, the only thing, and I'm not disagreeing, it's just uh, going by bedrooms. Uh, my family would do a holiday retreat, we call it. Yep. And it was eight of us, but it was a three bedroom house. So it was a living room couch fold out. Right. So if we limit it too much, it's going to make that situation bad. And this is my my parents, my brother and sister. You know, right. it, was, it was not a rage and party anyway. But well, there was eight of us in the three bedrooms, so we got to be careful because, like, a hotel room can have two queens. That's for four people. Right. So it's it, we need to bridge. You know, between being too restrictive and being restrictive enough. Right. And no offense against Larry in, in, you know, bringing up that comment with the bedrooms. That's why I didn't put it in the code because the building code, it does go by square footage of what an occupancy could be in a habitable yeah. sleeping area. So you have a certain <clears throat> square footage. So let's just say your minimum square footage is 70 square feet. You're really not getting more than one person in the 70 square foot. So mm -hmm. each additional person is supposed to be 50 square foot per person. So if you have a 300 square foot room, but that's not considered a bedroom, technically that wouldn't be in your account for sleeping areas, you know, and how many it can house. So I, you know, I'm, I'm, on the scale with both, I don't mind trying to cap it in some way, but I get what you're saying too, and that's why I didn't put it in the code in general, but I put it on the application so I can see and measure rooms and see what the occupancy could really be for each particular Airbnb, you know, each particular property. And I don't think there's going to be an occupancy police running around and saying, hey, we got it. John brought eight people. We should have six. I, I have enough good. jobs. <laughs> Justin. I liked it. I thought it was good. I thought everybody did a nice job on it. All right. So, well, we'll include Larry's comments. I mean, we're not trying to hide any of it. We're not no, making no, the law. Right. Larry made the comments. So yeah. I think, Melissa, we need the right to the town board and just say to them that, you know, Larry, one of the board members, I don't want to single anyone out, one of the board members felt there should be occupancy based on a uh, uh, number of bedrooms. Uh, one other comment would be the, uh, the, parking. the parking, parking, allowing them to, under building the building department approval, they could, you know, increase their parking. And we're trying to avoid parking on the road if we can. I don't think we can stop them from parking. By the there's not parking not street, yeah they'll, they'll park there yeah you know they'll park in that and as far as 77 a7 I, I don't know what, i would just say that the, at least one of the board members me find it a little confusing 
Yeah. And then my okay. attorney got mad at me and said, <laughs> I just explained <laughs> the derivation of that. See, Dave got blamed for something. And Mark's comment about we shouldn't make it overly, you know, I agree with Mark that, I mean, I would say the vast, vast majority of people use these in a nice way. My son uses them all the time. Yeah. You know, they go hiking up in the castle. And there's a lot that are, that are owner-occupied, so they're not going to, you know, have, you know, 9,000 people, you know, in their house either. Right. Do they put a, uh, I forget even, this is Virgo or Airbnb, the young guys can answer this one here, but do they put a, uh, like a uh, security deposit or anything? Yeah. Or anything? They do, right? Issue some, so I mean, you know, I don't, they, think, it would, I don't think they want to trash. I don't think it would overwhelm uh, somebody putting on an actual you know, rave, but but it, it's for the average person, they're not gonna mess around with losing that, right? And then there's code in there for if they break the law a bunch of times, oh, they could yeah, lose their I, registration, I, I, the whole thing, there's sure. fines and everything. Oh, that's <laughs> Lex has got it all on that, you know, we didn't even look at that tonight, but that's all in there. Yeah, oh, any more than two bonds, they get their permit. <laughs> All right, so uh, that's it. Uh, I encourage the residents here to go to the meeting next Wednesday night's town board meetings. Here, uh, you'll have your opportunity to make your comments and any questions you have in, the, in that. So that's your time at that point in time. So thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. And that uh, we're going to go quickly into a attorney-client uh, session, quick. And before we go home tonight, so uh, do we have to vote on that? Yes, we do. Can someone want to make a motion to go into an attorney client session? I'll make a motion to go into a second by Mark. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, so we're going to go in the other room. Uh, probably not. No, 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 we have no intention. So we could probably just shut down the uh, video. The, uh, well, you'll come out of it during the meeting. So they have to stay. Everybody's all here. <laughs> so they have to stay <laughs> <up. laughs> Yeah, because the meeting's not adjourned. Yet. Okay. So you gotta stay. All right, let's go in there.
Uh, I want you to go home tonight. We're all done.